I know. We made it back. We're back. We made it. <laughs> the we ship survived. returned us. We survived the Portland weather, <laughs> thunderstorms and rain. That was a kick. Yeah, as, as Jason made fun of us because we were all, hey, it's raining. Um, I was like, this is nothing. <laughs> thunderstorms, rain, crazy clouds. Man, was... The gods are speaking. Uh -huh. I think it was all said. Yeah. And Jason yeah. laughed at us because this is normal for him. Oh, man, that was a cakewalk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I would love that type of rain and that weather <laughs> that's funny versus ours ours sounds like the world's about to end <laughs> we do have pretty crossing fingers knock on wood whatever you want to say about that we do have pretty mild weather here so we do experience all four seasons in oregon but in washington but um yeah we do get a lot of rain it's just not thunderstorms and so that was right. That was quite a thunderstorm the first day. So that's what we're talking about. The first day we got there, we set everything up. It's beautiful out. Got a nice sweat setting up the tent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, warmed up a little bit. <laughs> right, red face, and um, and then here comes the thunderstorm. So it, it was good. At least but, it happened at night, you know, like at the end of the night, kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, and and um, there are stories about what happened after the thunderstorm. We'll talk about that in a little bit as well um about the uh the sounds the sounds in the middle of the night oh yeah that screeching yeah. sound we thought it was a coyote and someone said nope. <laughs> nope and then as i talked to the group um that was with us i talked to them as telling you saturday night a bunch of us got together and they were saying that not only was that screeching sound not a coyote because they live near coyotes or where they hear them all the time they said but also, what we were finding out is that it happened in the labyrinth. That's where the people were when, when the sound happened. So, uh, oh, very interesting. So should we go to the pictures? Should we start? Yeah, let's, 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 let's look at some pictures. And All right, so we're going to do that. Picture uh, time. So you guys are going to get subjected to my Facebook page because I just made it into an album over here. So if I flows through something fast it's just because it's probably not really relevant yeah um so that was that was the picture and then this is uh dan talk is yeah. okay talk is cheap he came this is my copper pyramid and uh he came and sat under the pyramid as you can yeah. tell the ground is wet from a horrendous thunderstorm <laughs> <laughs> that does not look wet <laughs> no. beautiful mound that Beautiful, beautiful picture of the mountain. It, we we had very few moments of actually capturing yes. the mountain. So we were lucky to get that. That's me with my youngest son, Jaden. So we'll come through that. That was breakfast. We had, right? That's yeah, that breakfast was breakfast. Table. Yep. A little totem. Organic pole. breakfast. Yeah. Here's another picture of the mountain I squeaked in before. I think, I think that was my first vision of a mountain in person in a way like that. Yeah. Yeah, other than an airplane. So, so this is James. The This would be Saturday morning. He was leading us in a, what did he call that? Chi, it's not Qigong. It was something else. Very similar, uh, but it dealt with the same stuff as you saw in the movie with Airbender. Yeah. So we were bending air. And that, it was we had pretty the cool. biggest group ever at East SETI that weekend. They said it was the biggest group of people ever. Uh, yeah, 150 people. Yeah. It was. For a sky watch weekend yep something like that it was quite a few um he's about to about to perform yeah it was pretty neat it was uh earth wind and fire um water and it was showing us the different techniques for like earth and then uh wind <laughs> yeah so i want to talk a little bit about this space right here that he's in because if you guys remember right, and I think it was in one of our videos, we asked if there was going to be anything to look for while we were at the ranch. And, and I was told that there would be an energy vortex or an energy oh, yeah. space in, mm -hmm. right in front of James's house. Well, James's house is this building right over here on the left. And he's holding this circle where, you know, we have the bigger circle and it was too many people. So he was going to activate these guys and their energy. And so he had a small group come inside the first 10 or so that made it in there, got to be in it. And I'm sitting there looking at that going, hold on. That's it. That's the spot. That's <laughs> the spot they showed me. And so afterwards I went up. I like where I was walking too. 
Yeah, yeah, and we have a video of, of Jason trying to find this spot. Yeah, um, she put me on a spot. <laughs> so this was this was Friday when we got there, and we when we get to that video. So it actually happened before this event. But anyways, I asked James afterwards. I said, "Do you do this this meditation thing often?" He goes, "Yeah, we do it every weekend." And I said, "Do you always do it in the same spot?" And he said, "Yeah." And I said, "Oh, well, that explains the vortex then." So he's doing this energy work here all the time. That's and it created a vortex. So that's them creating a ball of energy. Mm -hmm. and yeah, there's our group. There's Jason. Yay! More of our group. We had the high end trailers. There's our dirty little tents in the background that have to weather the storm. Um, this is actually my dad. He's under the pyramid, which I was kind of surprised he did that. So I was kind of excited. cool guy. Very but cool. Picture. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> he cracked me up because when we went to the office to check in, um, he they were asking me, "Oh, is Herman your dad?" <laughs> and I'm like, "How does everybody know who he is already? He made it here ten minutes before we did. <laughs> he had already made his mark." So we're just going to go through some of the group. This, these are people that joined us on our journey. And our nice size group. Yeah, we had a really good group and had a lot of fun with these people. Everybody showed up and brought their game. We had a lot of energy going with us. So there's my mom. I, oh, and there's dad. Uh, this is one of the gals that was at the ranch she wasn't with our group but i ran into her so many times we just decided to call it and become friends lots of hugs <laughs> lots of hugs lots of hugs on that one <laughs> 10 minute hug is what we started calling it uh that was the moon uh, i believe that was the second night because we couldn't see anything the first night i yeah. took that picture because there was a heart in the sky followed by another heart in the sky so i decided i needed to take that picture more of our group Okay, so the next picture that follows, I just did a little editing to see if there would be anything interesting come out of that. So I'll do that again. There, that was the original. And that was just me darkening. Like filter. Contrast. Yep. See, this is what we mostly saw. That's the mountain back there. Yeah. <laughs> that yep, was mostly our view of the mountain. Uh, that's the labyrinth back here. That's what we were talking about when uh, the people that were looking for Bigfoot that night of the storm were standing in this area and they found the uh or heard the screeching sounds this was in their building Who, where's jason i can't find him where's jason uh -huh. oh, yeah, there he is there he is they were they were playing some videos from their other events that they've held there that was kind of cool to have that going on for the sky. yeah that's uh cory good and yep. so that was a, a video that he he did at east seti so yep. that yeah. they're showing that was cool. And there's James. He, if you don't know him, he's the one that owns the ranch and does the UFO Skywatch and talks to the ETs and gets a lot of information for people. That's my feet after trying to get everything <laughs> done. Okay. From the big rainstorm. Here's lightning. All three inches on the ground. <laughs> my son was abducted. That was the results. <laughs> oh, that's what that is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that's just pictures of the clouds. See, 10 minute hug. There we are again. Okay, and then this is Shane. Yeah, that's on unbiased, unbiased on, the on the fence. Yep. Yeah. That's and a tall guy. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then this is the thunderstorm coming in. There's a picture of the pretty clouds. It all looked nice and peaceful before it. What was that? The calm before the storm that we were experiencing? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's uh talk is cheap, Dan and Pete. Dan and Pete. Okay, and this one's Dan, this one's Pete. Okay. Yes. And this one's Jason, this one's Tracy with bad yeah. wind blown hair. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Couple cool guys right there. Yeah. Now there should we go back to that? There we go right there. Oh. <laughs> you meant the other guys. Okay. Hummingbird. Just because oh, my hashtag, the magic is real. So my friend Kaylee, when she went to Disneyland, she had to get that for me, Believe in the Magic. There she Kaylee. is. Okay. There's the vortex. Jason trying to find the vortex. Tracy gave me some homework. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> you guys can't hear the sound, right? 
I didn't click the sound on that. I'm pretty much saying, is it right here? Is this the spot? And you're like, yeah, that's doing the hot cold. No, <laughs> keep going. I'm like, oh, I was like, do I go over here? <laughs> do I go that way? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, maybe. Yeah, I'm not giving you a lot of clues. So, yeah, you do find it eventually. We could fast forward this. Yeah, so eventually, I pr I pretty much for a while, you feel something right here. Like, to me, it felt like the energy was calm and it drops. And it felt so, it felt different from like, the, uh, from the other part. You did feel like something like, felt like the eye of the hurricane, like you was in the center of it and where everything was calm and it dropped. I love this, I love this look as you got it. You did it. I found it. <laughs> found it. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then this, uh, what did they call this place? This I think that was the meditation tent, wasn't it? Or the meditation area? Yeah, they had the the prayer, um, these little prayer, uh, I forget what you call them, flags. Um, and you could sit in there and meditate. And then over on the bench for the weekend, somebody had put the peanut butter and banana sandwiches for the Bigfoot because apparently that's <laughs> what likes. So over here on this bench, there was... Like Elvis peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Oh, there's my son. He'll appreciate me moving right through that. <laughs> Just uh, sitting around our camp. Okay, here we go. The labyrinth. Yeah, this is the labyrinth with all the <laughs> cosmos and galactic. <clears throat> yeah, moving into that. And people are leaving their offerings. And you can see all kinds of little things. There's, there's even a little rodent hole or something there. Somebody lives there, so... They were smart to make that spot. And here's Bigfoot's space. So you walk around the labyrinth and there's, there's all the apple. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. The apple for the Bigfoot, right? Right there. Yes. We were trying to dare Jason to take a bite out of that. He put it back. Yeah, I didn't want Bigfoot to get upset with me. It was already making noise that <laughs> night. It's probably a good thing. Right? Yeah, he wouldn't have taken kindly. Guess what that one is? Octorians. There we go. Inner Earth Beings, that one was very popular. A lot of people left their offerings there. Mm -hmm. Orion, they're beautiful crystals there. I think, it, yeah, yeah. Got those beautiful offerings there. That's my dad and Jason bonding. Uh, this is our friend Jeff who was going to. That was very uh, uh, open minded to everything, asking a lot of pretty interesting yeah. questions. So. Yeah, he is very open-minded about that stuff. Very curious. Uh, like, so he's like, so what's this all about? Explain this. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we, we kind of ditched you to do that while we walked like, through it. Well, how do you explain this? <laughs> yeah. So, so Jeff was standing here. I'll tell a little story about this. He, he was walking around. He kept feeling all this energy, and he ends up here standing in front of this stone. And he could just feel a lot of energy coming at him. So I went and stood across from him on the other side and closed my eyes. And it was the weirdest feeling. I could have swore that he snuck over and stood right in front of me and just got in my face. And so I opened my eyes because I was going to get ready to push him backwards. And he wasn't there. He was still standing in his spot. So there was definitely a little energy portal going on here where you could kind of move around. Um, and so we went back the next day with, um, there was eight of us and we went back and, and focused on that energy and had a little healing circle in the labyrinth, which was pretty cool. There's a far off shot of, this is where they do the sky watch where you see all the chairs set up here. That's James's house right there. There's a farmhouse that sits behind these trees where people can stay. A lot of things going on there. Uh, back to that. That was the tent, setting up the tent. We won't, we won't play that video. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a group of us there. It was a lot of fun. There's, you know, um, just walking around, getting to know other people. That is, uh, that's a big part of it too, is the social aspect. It's really friendly. You can just talk to anybody. Everybody there is like-minded and they're, they're there to meet you and, and share and interact and what's your story what what's going on how'd you get here that kind of stuff so speaking of sharing stories they even had unbiased on the fence having like a little um 
video conference thing and people were sharing their stories. So that was pretty yeah. interesting. And then that's when we learned more about the screech, the Bigfoot sound. <laughs> yeah. And they were getting, um, what they call it, plasma. They were sticking their hands out and their hands would disappear if they put it in a certain frequency or energy that they were feeling. Yeah. Their, it was like two uh, or three o'clock in the morning or something like that. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> what, what possessed them to do that, but, um, but sparkles. we did hear the screech. I know I heard sparkles. the screech. <laughs> pretty, pretty loud screechy noise. And I was like, hmm. Yeah, it, I tell you what, it woke me up, and um, it it went off like three times. Like I heard yeah. it three times, and I'm and like, it was done. I'm like, oh shit, what is that? <laughs> I have never heard this before. And then um, you're like, oh, that's a coyote. So I'm like, oh okay. And then. Yeah, out, like, like no, what are the odds it's going to be Bigfoot? But I don't, I will admit, I don't really know what coyotes sound like because I live in town, so I don't really hear them. Me neither. So I was just thinking, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. But yeah. I was like, it sounded very weird. So I was like, but, you know, if that's what they do, that's what they do. But I can't even remember now what the sound was, but it was, it was high pitch, kind of a screech. And yes. Um, yeah, and the, even those guys said they played it off as a coyote as well, and then they had recorded it and played it for somebody, and they said, that's not a coyote. Go look go look it up online. Right, that's what they were talking like, about. Yeah, and so that's when I was like, oh, hmm, okay. Yeah. I, I didn't want to be one of those, I'm so hopeful to hear or see a Bigfoot that I'm just going to create that, you know. So so that was kind of cool to find that information out that that it was kind of down, it was not, it was downplayed from the coyote. It was, was something else. Yeah. Yeah. Something more. Yeah. It, it woke me up, but I was like, okay, I'm still in the tent going back to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> this is the night of the storm. So backtracking on that, we had the most people ever for that have ever attended East SETI at the ranch. And then the next morning we find out that that was the biggest storm that has ever hit the area from anyone that could that lived there their whole lives has ever seen the day I most, show up. The most lightning strikes they've ever had everything and so that kind of information was floating around during the next day as well so that was kind of like hmm I felt like home <laughs> yeah. Jason's like okay hey. it, it was normal but for Washington that's not normal and for for it to be so not normal that the like Kathy and Kaylee stayed outside of um, the East Eddie Ranch and had breakfast in town and they said everybody at breakfast was talking about how they'd never seen a storm like that and she goes some of those people were pretty old and they were saying they had That's never seen a storm like that ever in their life living there and so so one of the biggest storms they've ever had I went on a good night <laughs> mm, yeah yeah you went on a good night <laughs> so so yeah we had a we had a pretty good time. Saturday's weather was really good to us. And we did get to watch the sky. One of the messages I remember from the Octorians was that we were not going to see them. But if we would um, just go by how we were feeling, we would feel them. Uh, we did do a, a channel in yes. the middle of, on Saturday. We, we all gathered around the campsite there and did a channel from Daniel. Yes, and that was pretty, pretty interesting. We all had homework and you did <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big on assignments. Homework, I should say and then there was some information that came through and meanwhile you're out in the sun for 45 minutes just getting baked <laughs> I was just sweating because they made me move my chair out from under the canopy and set in a certain spot and then later I was realizing one of the visions that I had was that I was up in the air looking down at our campsite and I'm realizing why I'm sitting there in the heat that I'm in the spot that I saw myself in from that aerial view looking down at our campsite. So they were showing that to us. So, um, so I thought that was interesting that I'm sitting in this, you know, and I did, I hadn't thought of that when I moved over there, that wasn't, it wasn't even on my mind. And then while I'm sitting there roasting in the sun while you guys are all under a shade and canopy, um, <laughs> I was sitting there thinking, wait a minute, this is what they showed me. This is the aerial shot that I had. Everything set up exactly like this. So, so that was kind of cool, a little confirmation 
with um, the things that I had gotten prior to coming. I yeah, think they showed prior actually. Yeah. Out. So, because we didn't see anything on Saturday night, uh, there was nothing in the sky, no activity. We we're all waiting and waiting and waiting till it was, I believe, about one o'clock in the morning, like one a.m. Sunday morning. Yeah, it, it was finally it was, one that danced around. Some shooting we stars. Da, 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 da. Yeah, we saw a lot of shooting stars, but then we did finally get the little dance around guy he went back he went forward danced around then sat i was like okay good enough for me i'm going to bed so for right here for the mountain part i think y'all weren't here yet i think oh yeah the flashing yeah it was like a little bit of a flashing can you see the mouse on the screen yep so it was kind of like right here there was like three or oh four or five uh lights just different spark lights it just went off like a couple of flashes it was like in this area right here. Hmm. So we did see this. And then um, uh, another guy. Now, this is more once when it got dark and it was all nighttime. They had this guy out there with a, a laser and he was pointing it at the mountain. And he's like, I'm knocking on the door. <laughs> so that was pretty <laughs> neat. Uh, you remember Andy Candy? Yes. Yeah. So he had that, that powerful uh, laser and he was just like flashing it at the mountains. Hopefully something will happen. And you kind of saw something that will go across right here. And you'll see something, you know, a little bit of a string of a light go right here. Very light, very subtle, but not nothing like, oh, God, look at that. You know, it was yeah. kind of like, did I see something or did I not see something? <laughs> you know, and then uh, another thing that was pretty cool was that they let us use the night vision goggles. Mm -hmm. Different things. So, and pretty much everybody was looking up instead of just looking at the mountain. And I would have never known that. I thought we'd stay looking at the mountain and see, but a lot of people were looking up and, you know, you can kind of see things moving through the sky, but you didn't know if that was a satellite or, or what. So, mm -hmm. but with the night vision goggles, you could see it. So that was pretty cool that they let us, let us use that. So when I used the night vision goggles, I scanned the field and I could see the little um, orbs yes. dancing around. That's Those were pretty cool to watch too. To look at. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can see them really good with the night vision goggles. And some of them, like when I had it, they darted out, stopped and went back, you know, and did, did these little things that, you know, this definitely isn't a dust particle and there's no light reflecting off of it. So you know, you got night vision goggles and it's dark out there and there's these little things dancing around out there and um, in the field all, all over the place. Nice. So nice. That's kind of fun to watch too. Um, yeah, another funny story that goes along with that was that you remember your buddy dressed up as a unicorn? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, by the way. We have a unicorn out there walking around. Yeah. Uh -oh. She had the night vision goggles at that time, and she was kind of like looking at the same thing in the field. And she's like, oh, look, there's a light. There's a light right there on the left. And she goes, what is that? I was like, I don't know. But I was like, that looks like just a, a light and everything. And so we're looking through it, and we're trying to see what's going on. And, and she's like, it's right there. It's right there. I was like, I think that's just a light. And I was goes. I'm like, I'm not too sure. I said, it's not moving or anything. And then James is right next to us. <laughs> he goes, that's just a, uh, a trailer. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> like you have your excitement with it first. <laughs> right, right. So she was like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So. That's funny. And then he's like, okay, I was just seeing if y'all were done with these night vision goggles because, you know, they're very expensive. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, those are right. The first time I went to East City, I was so in love with those night vision goggles. I thought, oh my God, I got to get a pair of these. Sit out in the backyard and watch for these ships, you know. And two grand later. <laughs> no, it was three. And I thought, oh, three. You know what? this two years later, I'm going to look again and see how much they are. And they are still right around three grand. They yeah. haven't changed in price. So yeah, they're, they are expensive. I understand him wanting to make yes. sure he knows where they're at. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But it was pretty cool. He, um, he had some kind of remote infrared laser thing out there as well to help out with seeing different things that's going on out there. 
but uh yeah it was cool it was definitely worth the trip and worth the funness as well yeah experiencing it and then like you did feel something like something like higher energy and everything so you did feel like something was was going on well, and I don't know how it really can't go on when you've got that many people collecting in one space. You know, right. he, he's definitely got himself a vortex. Like he was talking about that. The the ranch sits on a vortex or a ley line or however he was saying that. And um, it does attract energy there. And I did a meditation probably about a year ago where I was asked to, I, I forget how the meditation was laid out, but they they brought me to a different realm and I went into the fairy realm. And what I realized is I was on that property in my meditation. I had walked into the East Seti ranch and, and it was a fairy realm. And so it, it wouldn't surprise me if, if that it's actually what happens when we go there, because they've got the big foot, they've got lots of fairy energy. They've got lots of, I mean, people are just in a good mood for the most part when they're there, they're just lifted up. And um, so, you know, people are happy, they're laughing, they're having a good time, they're around like-minded people. Yes. Um, it, it, and it was worth staying so. on the ranch instead of leaving, so. Yeah, know. I think so too. Yeah. It, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're not a big tent camper, you gotta make reservations early on so you can get one of their cabins or one of the rooms that they have. Yeah. Otherwise you're a tent camper. <laughs> 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 but. I think we did pretty good in the tent. We, we fared pretty good. Um, yeah, I, there were several of us that had tents there. So that was, we all did pretty good even with the storm. It, yes, yes, there, there were some wet tents and some wet bags, but everybody. But the next day was hot and everybody just flung their stuff out and it all dried off mm -hmm. and you were good to go. Mm -hmm. So yes. everything dried hear, up very well. Yeah, you didn't hear anybody complaining. If um, that was a New Orleans, we would have a uh, Lake East Seti. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're holding gratitude that we were not in New Orleans. Oh uh, yeah, it would have been soupy mud and all that stuff. So that was pretty cool how everything dried up so quick. Yeah, it was uh, good. So yeah, I'm grateful for that. And the, was, and the land was probably glad for the water, but <laughs> it's all good. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I think it would be fun to do this again and set it up, you know, give people a little more heads up and more warning and see if we can get a bigger group out there. I think we had 15 people total. Yes, uh, yes. With our group. It was a good sized group for the kind of notice that we had and everybody seemed to be having a good time. And, and uh, yeah, we had our central con congregating spot for our uh -huh. personal group and yeah. Uh, you know, everybody was roaming around and having a good time and checking back in every once in a while. It worked out really nice. So, and the live channeling was pretty neat too. So, with all the, the group of people. So, yeah. 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 There was, there was some was healing good. work that got to happen, messages that came through. And that was the first time that I've done that live. So, that was, I mean, I've done, uh, I did a live radio show, but that's different. You know, that's not sitting in front of a bunch of people. Yeah. Um, one of the, you asked me what was the biggest challenge of doing that <laughs> live. And my answer was I, I know. people sitting there. Um, that yeah, is a little bit weird. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> I love them both very much. But yeah, that's a little bit weird when you're sitting there and your parents are watching you do this channeling. So uh, yeah, I was wondering what your dad was thinking. Like, oh, man, what's this all about? <laughs> 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 what is going on over here? But he was cool with it. He said. Yeah, he was the first one to go, well, why would that make you feel weird? I watch this stuff all the time. You do it just like the other people I've seen. It's just like, oh. oh right, right. That. So, yeah. yeah. So he was like, yeah. Um, I didn't know. I forgot that he was a fan of the Gaia Network. But he's like, yeah. He goes, he goes do you know, uh, I forgot what name he mentioned. He goes, but they, uh, they do that too when they're channeling. Their voice changes and everything, just like how Tracy did just like that I'm like oh okay all right yeah yeah that, so that was really good it was a good it was a good challenge to do that and um you know it took me out of my comfort zone Jason's really good about taking me out of my comfort zone <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, got me to just try something new and it was good yeah and, and then uh I can't re I have to probably 
listen to the recording because we did record the session. So, so maybe we could post that. Maybe I can leave a comment down below. Maybe if we should post that channeling. But um, I'm connected to the Dragon Realm for sure. Yeah, that's so funny. You gave that me that comes homework. in after you <laughs> asked so badly for the Dragon video. Yeah, so you gave me some homework. I have to... I have to do something like uh, work, like I'm more connected than what I think I am. So it's something like that, like working on being more connected and letting the information flow, it was something like that. And then I'm connected to the blue realm. So, oh. so whatever that you know, meant. Remember, I don't remember these things. Yeah. <laughs> He's telling me about the channel. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't yeah. remember a lot. Mm -hmm. It was pretty neat. You know, everybody had like a little something in, in the group. Everybody had like a little message, even your dad and your mom. So, and your mom had some healing, a group. Yeah. Healing. Yeah. There was some healing that, oh yeah, they were assigning. I do remember that. They were going through and grabbing people out of the group and saying, go over here, put your hands there, do that, do this. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I have to say, I, I just love, I love that group because they're all so trusting and, and ready to help in any way. And so that's always fun too. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty cool. We're going to have to do that again. And maybe have a, we're going to have an event over there, you know, maybe yeah, we're manifesting year. that. Yeah. Cause that'd be great. Cause it was, it was cool. It was very nice. It was very nice to see that place and be there. Everybody was so kind and, it was a neat little place. Let's see. I'm going to share one of the pictures. We went to the Japanese garden. We went to, um, can you see the picture? Yes. So this is part of the Chinese garden, and this is one of the buildings inside. Now, I will have a video done on this with the video clips, but that would be on my other channel, Work to Invest. So that would be on my other channel. But this was pretty neat to see this and to see this this building in this chinese garden and a lady oh did you get any of her playing yes a, a video yes mm -hmm. i did and that video i'm gonna put them all together and i'm gonna put it on my vacation channel <laughs> yeah that was really cool she like more of my job. personal channel yeah yeah she was playing this and it it sounded beautiful mm -hmm. it was pretty amazing and like either her her mom or it was her mom i asked sitting right here watching her and, and she was like like so was like just beaming yeah she was all into it focusing on it like like don't screw up <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was pretty cool yeah that was nice too i i had never been there and um that was one of the funny things about uh going on that tour is that i had never never done that before so I got to see things with Portland and Oregon that I hadn't seen before because um, I went on the tour. So that was good. Yeah. And, uh, the Rose Garden was pretty cool. Yeah. And I'm going to share this funny picture. It's not a funny picture. It's a funny story, actually. Okay. Funny story on my side. <laughs> so pretty much when you leave the airport, I mean, you hit and – I was calling them mountains. So I'm like, oh, look at these mountains. Wow, they're so close to the airport. So this was like, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes from the airport. And I'm like, wow, it's like, it didn't take it's long. To that start. Far. Yeah, it's, yeah, it really isn't very far out of town. Right. So I'm like, oh, man, you don't. Yeah, yeah, I have mountains so close to the airport. And then, you know, I'm calling all these mountains and mountains and mountains. And then we get to East SETI. And it's like, okay there's so many mountains by the airport. And then it's like, then I get to East city and it's like, Oh, that's a mountain. That's a mountain. <laughs> so we I was like, y'all must call those mountain. hills. And this is a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you come up on that, I mean, the pictures don't do it justice for the size of that thing at all. Uh, -uh. You know, not at all. It's huge. Yeah. Not and, at all. Um, I think Mount Hood might even sit higher than that one. So in Oregon, we've got, there's certain spots that you can stand where you can see Mount St. Helens in Washington, Mount Adams, Mount, Saint, uh, Mount Hood in Oregon, 
and then there's the three sisters in the bend area in oregon as well there's a lot of a lot of these types of mountains a lot of skiing options for people in this area it's really pretty nice yeah but it was fun lots of fun we'll have to do it again definitely so yeah if you guys are interested and want to find out when we're gonna do something let us know <laughs> and i gave tracy right, some of my stickers <laughs> and twice this week i've had people go into regressions where they say i keep seeing triangles on triangles that's oh amazing. that's interesting and they were talking about the energy grid that it creates oh that's cool yeah so i thought that was kind of cool too i wonder if that's can that, i mean what are the odds of that happening you put up the sticker and next thing you know people are having these visions and these triangles on triangles yeah <laughs> but yeah it happened twice this week where somebody brought up the triangle and then there's another triangle on top of this triangle on a triangle and i'm like hmm, hmm. did fire. it look like did it look like this did it look like that <laughs> hmm. so if you're interested in some stickers i do have them on uh, a link down below and it's on uh, teespring so I will have a link down below. I don't know what to call this. So I just created a little website for it. And yeah. Just roll with it. Let's just find them everywhere. Put them everywhere. <laughs> Buy them up. Put them everywhere. There you go. I like it. Yeah. Very good. Cool. I want to show you guys the um, bus that Jason had to ride around on. Um, it's a nice big pink bus. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Save the tatas. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There's some of the pictures we got in Portland as well. Oh yeah, that was cool. That that was a big Zen garden. Yeah, that I don't was think Japanese. I want to be the guy that had to rake that sucker. I I tried to find that couple so I could say, hey, I got this really cute picture <laughs> looking over the city. Yeah. Couldn't find them. That's a that's a Hallmark picture. It was, and they got away from me. I couldn't I couldn't catch up with them. Yeah, that was a Japanese garden. Yeah, it was really. That's just looking overlooking the city of Portland. And the pretty little waters there. Okay, now now you guys don't have to go because I took a lot of pictures. And there I am. But yeah, there's a lot of pretty little spots. That's the rose gardens across the street from it. Oh man, flowers as far as oh, I can see almost. And it smelled so pretty over there. You could just walk in and you smell the roses, literally. And it kind of had layers, like you had a, a layer of land and then it dropped down and you had another, another layer, layer of land. Yeah, it's all just roses. Roses, roses. pretty cool. And then this one was the Chinese garden, right? Yes, yeah. that was the Chinese garden. Yeah, and there's the young gal that was playing the music. Mm -hmm. There's some pretty cool things to see there, too. Oh, I like wish I had my sound hooked up. Aw. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that was, but yeah, I've got a video of it, too, but I didn't put my sound on the share thing, so sorry. But Buddy wants to make his appearance. Hey, Buddy. It must mean it's time to wrap it up because <laughs> getting tired <laughs> hungry I think, he I think he wants me to open the door oh uh, so all right but that was east city you guys it was wonderful yes um, it was nice it was fun the magic was real in east city yes yeah. interesting yeah. things were going on <laughs> yeah yeah the, lights, the sounds you know so the amount of stories. people there wasn't any, there wasn't an event going on that weekend. It was just I watch uh, unbiased on the fence and um, mm -hmm. the, Oh, tell, say the other one, the um, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Those guys were there, but they weren't really holding an event there. So for there to be the amount of people that there were there, that kind of threw me. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. So I think I there was know. something to it all, you know, the biggest yeah. storm, the biggest crowd. We were there. <laughs> <laughs> Extra icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah. We brought the Octurians. Hello. So yeah. 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 We brought the noise. That's how I'll say it. We brought the noise Friday night. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so, all right, you guys, hopefully the, this video gets out to you quickly because I know you've been waiting for it. And um, Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to take a pause, and then I think we're going to do, do a channel, right? Yeah. So, all right. So watch for both videos. All right. Talk to you again. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone.